I am super excited for today's video. We're going to turn a pontoon into a tritune. So about a year ago, we bought our first boat. Uh, didn't know anything about boats at that time. Uh, only thing that I knew is that I wanted a pontoon style boat, you know, flat deck, wide open, plenty of space for the family. Uh, to me, it was the most versatile boat for me and my needs. Uh, not looking to do tubing, not looking to do water skiing, just looking to get out on the water, relax, and have a good time. And for me, that was a pontoon. Now, like I said, I didn't know anything about boats prior to. Um, so, you know, got the pontoon, been having a blast on it. Uh, and then we ended up becoming the friend that owns a boat which is great. We love the company. However, what I didn't realize is that the ratings for boats is about the equivalent of what I call the ratings for tents. If it says two, it really only fits one. If it says four, it really only fits three. So it's kind of same thing. Uh, on our boat, we're allowed to have nine passengers or like 1,200 pounds. So with the weights that people use when they're figuring these kind of things up, I probably take up three people as it is. So when we have friends come with us, you know, there's four in my family. And if we have three or four other people come along, I get really, really nervous about how much weight the boat should have in it. Um, now, nobody's standing at the dock with a scale and, and checking everybody's weight or the Coast Guard's not coming onto your vessel with a with a scale to check and see how much anybody weighs. Especially when it comes to my family, I'm very safety con conscious, so I want to be doing things safely. Well, the thing that affects how much weight or how many people you can hold is obviously the buoyancy. So by adding a third tune or turning your pontoon into a tritune, it ups your weight. So I found this company, uh, Pontoon Wholesalers, and they make what's called a poly third tune. And that's what we're going to slap on today. Uh, so there's kind of be like a review slash a install video. So uh, might be a long one. Uh, if you got to pee, go do that now and then we'll get started. So I'm going to go pick up the boat, bring it back to the house, and then we'll get everything installed. Okay, so first things first, in order to be able to get to the underside, I'm just going to remove this front ladder assembly and probably that spare tire. So I got room to move around in there. So let me get those off and then we'll see where we're at. Okay, so as you see, we got everything all disconnected now. Uh, so what I have to do now is find the center line. So to do that, I'm just going to look where the tunes are currently mounted on these beams that are running across and just find the middle of that. Okay, I'm showing 53 inches, so that's gonna be 26 and a half. And for this back one, I'm going to go right in front of this V. Okay, once we have that center line, we're supposed to go nine inches, nine and three quarters of an inch to each side. Okay, now that we have those marked, we're going to get some clamps and try to hold these things in place and double check our width to make sure that we're good. The last thing we want to do is drill holes and bolt things in and then find out we're not good. So we'll do, we'll do a little dry fit here. So let me get those in place and then we'll see how we're sitting. Okay, since I'm working solo here, I kind of just put some cargo straps in place to kind of hold them up while I put the clamps in. So the clamps are in, like I said, that's nine inches and three, nine and three quarters of an inch off the center line. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of the tune sections and see how that slides in there. Okay, so I have the back tune here. You'll see it as I'm sliding it in. Uh, I just sprayed the inside with some glass cleaner. They say to use some stuff from the Dollar General to uh, kind of lubricate it to help you slide it along the rails. But of course, improper planning. Today's 4th of July, so they're not open. But let's see 
see how we're doing here. Okay, so now what's happening is the bolts on this spare tire carrier are preventing me from sliding past it. So we're gonna try to pull these off real quick and then see if we can't get her in there. Like I said, right now we're just trying to make sure everything fits the way it's supposed to. And as you can see, everything <clears throat> seems to work as advertised. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these down and get them bolted in for good. There is a warning on the website, and I did see on other videos, that as people were doing these installs, they had the tunes sitting outside in the sun. And then because of the heat, it caused expansion and they couldn't get the tunes in. They had to wait a whole additional day for the tunes to cool off before they could get them in. Okay, and those plugs look to be a 532nd, or excuse me, a 316th. I'm just going to make them flush. Okay, so we'll give these bad boys one more spray and call it a day. So as you see, that part has a Audi, this part has an Innie. At least on mine, it's the other way to tell is the drain port or the drain plug is on the back side. All right, one more. You know, we just got to put a plate in the back and a plate in the front and we'll be good to go. Okay, so I'm going to have to take this center tune back out because here is where the bow strap goes and I don't have enough clearance. So I'm going to take the bow strap off here and put it on this front plate that's supposed to help hold the tunes in place. So let me get that off and try to get that on. Okay, so... We got that bow strap released. And now I just have a clamp on one side. I'm going to pre drill the holes for the bolts. Obviously, not going to install it until that third tune is in there. So, what I'm going to do off camera is get those holes drilled. I'll drill out two new holes. For the bow strap stick that in there slap it all together then we'll come back on video okay and just like that we got ourselves a tri-tune so that took me about took me about three hours to get done by myself you probably could get done about two and a half hours with another person 
you have somebody drilling your holes and then you go behind them and putting the uh, bolts and nuts in. So let me clean up all this mess and then we'll get back. Okay, everybody, so back from the lake and here to give the results. Uh, first, I'll say totally complete difference. Uh, going out there, it kind of felt like we were boating on ice. Uh, just super smooth across the water. Uh, of course, we got out there early in the morning, so the lake was pretty smooth uh, already. Uh, but even on the way back later in the day with a lot of boat traffic on there, you kind of just ate through the waves instead of getting rocked around really bad by them. So definitely a huge difference in the handling of the boat. Uh, turns were super smooth. It definitely reacted better to turns with that third tune on there. Uh, but let's take a look at the power. So before I put the tri-tunes on, uh, when it was just the regular pontoon, I'd be at 4,900 RPMs uh, and get 14.1 miles per hour. So that's myself, my wife, my daughter, and my mother-in-law. Full tank of gas, coolers, all that kind of stuff. Same exact loadout. Uh, we were getting 4,950 RPMs uh, and got up to 16.1 miles per hour at one point in time. So uh, prior to, I could barely get to 16 with just myself and the boat uh, and nobody else in there. So definitely a huge difference in power and speed. Uh, but again, to me, I bought the pontoon because I just want to go slowly cruising around on the lake, not looking to do anything crazy. So the speed wasn't the thing for me, it was the buoyancy. So uh, definitely glad that we got that knocked out. So the only disadvantages uh, I would say, uh, I did notice like, and I gotta do some research. And if you know, if you were uh, a, a boater and know these things, please feel free to put it down in the comment section. But I noticed my whole shot is a lot, lot slower. So uh, if I go up to full, throttle the rpms will slowly start coming up and they'll sit at 4,000 for a little while and then slowly creep creep, bleh, creep their way up to that 4950 mark uh, so i tried playing with the trim a little bit at the lower speeds to see if it would pick up the rpms a little bit faster uh, again i didn't really start messing with that until we were on the way back and after i had slowed down uh, getting ready to go into the docking area so, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's, and, and again, I didn't change any propellers. I didn't change any engine position. So it could be that too. Uh, like I said, if, if you know, drop it down in the comment section below. So that way I can, you know, take a look at those things and, and see, see if that makes a difference. Uh, but I'm, I'm okay with it. I just want to make sure that I'm not doing any kind of damage to the motor, uh, like over torquing it or anything down at that, uh, down at that range. But, but yeah, other than that, highly, highly, highly would recommend. I'll put a link to the pontoon wholesalers website down in the description box. So you can go check it out yourself. Uh, you won't see prices on there because it's custom made by size of your boat. So, uh, they'll usually send you a few measurements to take uh, and then they'll give you a quote for it. So, but you can see what the install, well, you just saw what the install looks like, but you can see uh, all the different products and that kind of stuff. Okay, thanks so much for sticking around. That's gonna wrap things up for us. Uh, if you found the video useful, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see a fat guy sweating in his garage while he talks about stuff that he buys, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you hit that bell, we'll get notified anytime something new comes out. Other than that, we'll see you next time. Bye.